Um, so good morning. My name is Rosa Reynosa. I'm the Windsor Wellness Coordinator, and I'm very excited to be here with you all. Uh, welcome. And so we're just going to go around, introduce ourselves, and uh, let us know what you do in the community and, and yeah, what job, you, what role you play. Thank you. Elizabeth, we'll start with you. Okay. I'm Elizabeth Ola, and I am the EL Coordinator at Maddie Washburn for um, TK through second grade. I guess it's not going to work if I mute myself. <laughs> Grace, can you go next, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Grace Curtin Fiano. I'm an assistant principal at Windsor High School, and my role in the community is outreach for uh, students and parents and community members bringing restorative practices and restorative justice to the community. I've been very involved with uh, Wild Windsor Wellness prior and then also with the chamber and bringing uh, the practices to uh, the district for HR to utilize. We began that process about four years ago and we are now expanding it through the use of our uh, students who are bringing restorative uh, practice and community building circles to uh, our middle schools and hopefully uh, to the elementary and four or five Annette's campus. Woo! And uh, I'm delighted to be here. Um, Good. Thank you. Sue? Sure. I'm Sue McQuitty. <clears throat> I'm a co-chair person at Windsor Wellness Partnership. Uh, and my role in the educational community has been to be a school gardener and nutrition educator in uh, K through five mostly. Um, and um, I'm just, you know, uh, extremely passionate about bringing um, resources together in the community and allowing people to expand their reach and, and bring wellness to Windsor. Annette? Right on, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I know, I'm still learning that mute button. Um, it's good that I stay on mute sometimes. Um, I'm Annette Zucconi Montez, and I am a first year down principal at Brooks Elementary. Um, I was a parent of two very successful Windsor graduates. For 15 years, I was a parent, and in the last six, I've become a staff member. Um, I come from a multicultural family and uh, have all the complications related to that. Uh, my uh, dad's an Italian immigrant and my mom is the first in her family born here from Puerto Rican immigrants. Mm -hmm. And so I've, um, I'm the first in my family to go to college. In fact, my mom was a, um, was a 17 year old when I was born and didn't finish high school until her 20s and then went to college herself in her 40s. Um, and uh, super proud to represent kind of um, multicultural kids in our system and, the, and the, the complications and the richness that come with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still learning and growing and in my own awareness, it took until I was, I think 31 in a multicultural ed classroom at Sonoma State mm -hmm. for teacher to go, hey, what's your background? And I shared it with her and she goes, what do you know about your uh, Puerto Rican heritage? And I go, mm, not much. I was raised by an Italian dad and, and an uh, Italian stepmother. And she goes, maybe it's time. I go, well, I know about arroz con gondoles and I know about you know, salsa music and my papa's marachas. But um, she goes, there's more. <laughs> so she sent me on, set me on a journey for the last 20 years exploring what, uh, what it means to internalize racism and um, what it means to, you know, come out proud and loud and, um, and challenge systems that might be in place that um, may not be uh, open yet to um, young Latina women. So. Nice. Nice. Happy to be on this. Happy, thank you for the invite. So, nice. so important to, for me to, to participate. So thank no, you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, Chris? Probably with that mute button too. Good morning, Chris Kane. Like I'm director of human resources, and uh, I also am the district's representative to the uh, Winter Wellness Partnership. And um, yeah, just happy to be part of this and to to have these discussions in 
uh, in Sonoma County. I think it's there's some really unique challenges in this area that I'm discovering as a fairly newcomer to the area. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Ms. Montserrat. Hi, good morning. I'm happy to see so many folks that I recognize. Um, oh, let me turn it up a little bit. Yeah, turn it up just a there little. Go. All right. Don't want to overwhelm you with my super loud voice today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Montserrat Archila. I am um, a Windsor Wellness Partnership uh, Steering Committee member. I'm a resident of Windsor, but I also work for St. Joseph Health, which is a health, local health care system. And um, by title, I, I'm school-based behavioral health lead. And, and really what, what that amounts to is that I get to do amazing work with schools across our county and to bring resources around social emotional learning and to support our students to discover mindful practice and movement as a future you know, tools that they can take into their future to promote health. Um, so I'm just really happy to be here amongst all of you and thanks for having me. Thank you. Dr. Collins? Lamar Collins, I'm the principal at Windsor High School. And of course, I want to um, just promote an inclusive environment and not just the school, but also the town of Windsor. Thank you. Ms. Shannon? Um, I'm Shannon Johnson. Um, I'm a teacher at North Bay Med Academy and I also live in the town of Windsor and have lived here for almost 30 years. Thank you. And Allison? Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for inviting me. I'm Allison Griggs, and I am the Student Services Coordinator with our district. Okay, perfect. And last but not least, Mr. Curtis. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm sorry, I was, I was still typing up Allison. I, I'm going to have to ask Allison for a title again. <laughs> but um, uh, I was typing my notes for so I had all you in, you know, um, all that beautiful stuff you were sharing uh, somewhere logged in so I, I can come back to it and so I can keep ruminating upon uh, you know, all the wealth that you bring to the table. And you have a tremendous amount of community wealth. But I am Curtis Acosta. Um, I've been, um, I li I'm in Tucson, Arizona in the moment, but I, I grew up in California, Northern California kid. I, I, uh, my formative years were in uh, the South Bay, uh, Sunnyvale Mountain View. Uh, California, and then up in um, uh, my high school years were El Dorado Hills, California, where my um, where my mom still lives today. Um, and uh, and my sister, my sister lives in Woodland, California now. So that's uh, so so I still have a lot of Northern California roots, and been working um, been working in uh, back at home, my original home, um, for since probably exclusively since uh, 2013. Although I still I still very much, I still live here in Tucson, Arizona, where I was a high school teacher for 20 years and um, was part of a uh, historical educational program that became a historical educational moment and that ended with uh, a victory after some really brutal um, racist attacks and defeats uh, by the, the state of Arizona. It ended in a victory in federal court in 2017. And we can, if it ever is applicable, we can get into any of that history. Um, but um, and since then, I, I you know while I was finishing, well, like my last few years in in the classroom, I was in a doc my doctoral program here at the University of Arizona, and um, and I finished that up in 2015. And I'm now, now I'm also a professor here at the University of Arizona, and uh, I um, I'm just recently took over as director of our Master of Education program, secondary ed, and uh, that's about it. But, but mostly you all know me from uh, work that I'm doing with the county, um, my team, my consulting team and I, which have been working, you know, pretty much established first by myself in 2012, but, but as a team, probably 2013, 14, we started building out just, it, it, you know, some of the workshops that I was doing were, were being, were successful and um, with some of the school districts um, and just educational organizations. I used to travel all over the place, but <clears throat> the more I established myself, the more I wanted to keep it, keep it first where I felt really safe, which is in Northern California. And now we've expanded up and down, um, working in 
up in Oregon and in Washington, but mostly uh, Northern California is a, is, a, is a real sweet spot for us. I'm really honored that, that folks have uh, taken to um, our work. So we re currently work in uh, Santa Rosa City Schools and um, we've, um, we've also, uh, we just had a good conversation with Healdsburg about their, uh, their, their exploration into ethnic studies. Um, we currently work with uh, Woodland Joint Union School District and San Mateo uh, High School Joint, uh, 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 sorry, San Mateo uh, Union High School District. So a little bit about where, you know, I don't give it, I won't have to give you all the, all the places we've been, but just like some context that we've been working at. We've also worked at Napa in the past um, with Dr. Sweeney when he was uh, superintendent. And we've also worked with uh, Dr. Uh, with, with Socorro, Superintendent Shields at, um, with Socorro at, uh, at Sonoma Valley. So we know, we know uh, we're, we're getting, being in the, the two wine valleys has been, is, is kind of a home base for us. And Carlos, my, my, my part, one of my partners in, in, uh, is, is, lives in Napa and um, as well as a few of our other, um, other team members. So, um, so that's a little bit about who I am, where I'm from and what we've been doing locally with you all too and getting to know your county and your region uh, has been a really, really, um, really a blessing. It's been, a, uh, it's a really progressive space that also is being reflective uh, upon, I think honestly upon the challenges and some of the obstacles in trying to, to find that, that what we say in La Quesh, that tu eres mi otro yo, that you are my other me, that common humanity, uh, which we see as a country right now that we're, we're engulfed in. So there you go. I'll put tie it up there and then we can start the combo. <laughs> you know, so um, again, so we're here to brainstorm on ideas of what we want to do, how we want to start this conversation. I, you know, I, I know there's smaller groups, individual groups that are, that are already talking about it, but how do we um, invite people into this conversation? It was so funny because I was typing a message and I had to write it on my board back here and I was writing what's the um, kind of a mini agenda, but what steps are, are, do we need to work on next? And the, the uh, autocorrect changed uh, the word working to wiring. And I just thought that was so funny because maybe it is a wiring, a process. How do we rewire our thoughts, our brains, our ideas of, of how we see things? And I just thought, oh, that was, I had to write it down. But in, so that's kind of where uh, you know, where are we, and, and my, the favorite thing that I'm learning, Annette, your story is not the only story that I've heard recently about once you get out of high school, you start learning about race, ethnicity, whatever, culture. It, so, so with, you know, us here, what can we do now? What can we do in our community, in our school district to help educate and work? So, uh, Curtis, if you have any ideas on how to lead the brainstorming session, I would love your guidance and kind of moving that question around and asking people. Um, so if you don't mind, we'll, I mean, cause I've, I want to share, but I want, I don't, I don't want to be the only one talking. <laughs> so uh, please Curtis. Yeah, so um, just, uh, just to open it up, uh, you know, you know, your community, you're, you're the experts in your community and, um, so it's really, really pivotal that we hear from, from, from you all. And, but it's also, um, uh, what, so we've been also working with Santa Rosa, their health action chapter and mm -hmm. um, starting conversations with, we had a really, we had a similar meeting with Petaluma. Um, I think it's, uh, is, it, is it CHIP? Is that their health action chapter? I don't know, so all, I might be having acronym overload, but um, so, you just really organically, I think the way you all started or, you know, kind of the marker Annette put down was really nice. And so Rosa, you, you hold it onto that as, as, as some, as some precious and beautiful knowledge. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Um, so I think, you know, uh, you know, that's a good way to start, you know, since, you know in, in how you just summarized like traditionally, you know, if we look at education, it's been a space that, you know, um, We've marginalized, you know, sometimes, most of the times intentionally. Um, you know, if we go back historically, uh, education it was an, is an assimilation project in this country. And we can go back to boarding schools and we can go back to antebellum laws, looking at how African-American 
folks were were were, um, were barred from you know ed being educated, learning to read. Those are punishable offenses. And then how Native American folks the, the idea in, is kill the Indian, save the man. You know, gendered language. Um, but um, so so in that and in what's interesting is happened to almost every community of color, and of course it happened to to women in a in a particular way as well. So once we can, and that, that one of the difficult things has been having everyone like just you know you know agree upon our own common history that those things really happened, right? And so we we're still living in those tensions. And um, but what we do know as far as as far as research is when we start leaning into these things through ethnic studies or through culturally responsive sustaining education, and we can talk about those terms another time if, if you like. But uh, it's been really helpful. For for um, for students, you know, so for them to to um, to center to center education around them, and that means like that means we have to stop, you know, um, you know, there's the standards. Everything needs to be needs to be organic, which is the way we like to work with our with our partners. So whatever's going on and whatever you've been doing and you see where, where there's natural connections to the idea of racial equity and beyond that just the idea of equity for marginalized and historically oppressed peoples um yeah that's where we should start that's it and, and i would say one more thing like um we recently so we, we've been working we've been already doing the the work with, with santa rosa uh health action and one of the things we asked like the so the chat at the chapter meetings and we, we're getting about 40 folks so Santa Rosa is a big place and but it's nice to know that we're consistently getting about 40 people at these meetings especially because Vince Harper is telling us you know traditionally we get about eight people you know and I, so the first day was like a sucker punch for me because I, I was like oh we're gonna do small group work and now I got this giant group and I'm solo um, but it's okay, we just laid down some foundation uh, to talk about some of the things that I just brought up, some history, some common language. And, um, but what we asked the other day, what Carlos and I asked was like, what, 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 what were the viruses before COVID that were affecting your community? So I think you all have that community cultural wealth as, you know, that's a tool we use um, that uh, Dr. Terry also developed and that, um, so you probably know where where that is, and maybe that's where we find some synergy for moving forward. And if we, of course, if we want to uh, place this in the school, um, in this we want to start with schools. That 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 is our you know that is where we our training is our, our sweet spot. You know that's where we have lived. But we are we're also we're also um, because we've leaned into this work the way we have in our lives. It, we 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 were finding that we we can add, we, we you know hold other spaces too, other institutional spaces, and help them look at their own their own gaps, their own you know where we say we're in La Kesh, that idea of you are my other me, where where the where the it's either under threat or absent. Um, so this type of you know um, this this common humanity that we're going to need to build up in our country because we haven't had it historically is a process, right? And so of the way we work with folks around that process, it can, can help affect numerous spots and communities. And whenever you bring students, you bring their families and you bring the people that work with students. So it is a community thing. Once you talk about students and with schools, you talk about community. I mean, in the most romantic sense of public education, right? So um, actually what's one of the things that we were talking about with, with, with Healdsburg is, is the opportunity we have with Corazon and to in and 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 their multiple partnerships and you have multiple partners here on this in this Zoom to think about different ways and different entry points and that we could work simultaneously, you know, and get get a plan simultaneously to start that process of 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 of, of equity, of humanity, of common humanity. So I'll throw it, that out there and just see if, if everybody's bubbling with some. Some, some feelings about how, how, it, how it feels in Windsor. So yeah, I, I want to hear from everyone else, but I, just, I do want to add, we do have this recycling program at Cali Calmeca here in Windsor, and it is so impressive. Those kids are taking that home and educating their parents on recycling. So I just, I know that, that if we do start with our youth, we, we can make a difference. So um, yeah, please, please someone else share. 
Um, North Bay Med Academy has an Indigenous Native Student Alliance, and um, that's been really, really active, really great work. And I went to a um, their award ceremony because I haven't been very involved because I straddled two schools, um, but I have Indigenous students, and so I always try and do my curriculum for them so that they get supplemental stuff that they can read. Um, but um, it's been really helpful and they really want to expand what they're doing. Um, they want to do a gardening program, um, really work on um, plant wisdom, plant medicine, you know, uh, what are traditional foods. Um, it was very, very exciting. And I just, um, this summer, we did approve, the board approved for the high school um, an ethnic studies course. And I only have a first draft of it. I just requested it just now. Um, the final version of it, but there is a course that's been written for ethnic studies. It's just kind of COVID right now to come up with a new course and uh, teach a new course when we're going to have trouble teaching the courses we have right now. But I mean, the work's been done. Yes, that course was approved. Thank you, Shannon. That course was approved uh, two years ago and it's A through G and it's on the books. And so for those who are not on the uh, 912 level, what that means is once a course is approved by the school board, then uh, it, it remains in our course catalog and that we can uh, offer it to students uh, at any time. We don't have to go back through the process of uh, creating a course um, and aligning it through A through G. What, what I would like to uh, uh, ask and explore having worked with uh, students uh, in, now we're in our third year with working with SCO with empathy, um, equity, and student engagement uh, through uh, the work of Jessica Pergolsky and Chuck Wade, bringing in experts from all over uh, to address the equity issue. And we focused on our students who um, are Latinx, particularly the males who are underperforming at Windsor High and Vineyard Academy um, in our art classes, as well as in our Phoenix class, which is for 10th graders. All that to say, when I'm interviewing, shadowing these students, doing empathy interviews with these students, what comes up over and over again is the literature. What they're being presented with in terms of reading and uh, novels, of uh, resources, uh, is very, very one, uh, just a very narrow white perspective. So what I would like to learn and ask about are uh, reading lists uh, that are approved A through G, funding sources, uh, uh, so that we as a district can diversify our authors, our perspectives, so teachers can have some training and experience to deliver uh, the the voices of uh, all peoples, women, the Native Americans, African Americans, all of the Latinx um, complexity uh, that 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 they're dying to read about, and and when I first joined Windsor High, I looked at the reading list and I I was. I was really dismayed and, and raised the question over and over in our English department, but because we're a big school, 1700, you know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of books and, you know, a lot of expense and costs. But I, I think that being able to start as a district looking at our reading selections, um, middle school, elementary, across the board and do some, some deep dive and research in that so that the students see themselves in the language they see themselves and their own stories in anything and everything that they read, including the history books. I think that, Grace, absolutely. When I have students that are really having a hard time, if I give them stuff to read that is more relevant to them, they read it. Thank you. Monserrat? I'm wondering if this is where um, partnering with our light local library is a really good um, kind of starting point where they can highlight authors. If we give them a list of folks that they would like highlighted, they can put it on their websites. We 
I've been working with the local libraries in Sonoma Valley on a tech and tutoring program for families. And the library stepped up right away and said, can we make videos in Spanish for you for free? And I said, yes. Can we offer classes on how to access online free reading? Yes. Can, I mean, they were just so gracious and stepped up immediately when we started making asks because we were trying to uh, bridge that equity divide with tech in Sonoma Valley and all of the challenges that were happening. And, and because we know that funding is going to be um, bumpy, for lack of a better word, um, as we move through COVID and um, potentially fire season, um, I think that being able to go to, even myself, I, I could research what books I could give my kiddo, but if I go to my local library and there's just something there available for me as a parent that really helps me and can point my kiddo in the right direction. So um, i just kind of throwing that out there. Good, great idea. Annette? There we go with that mute button. Um, I just, I was so, I'm so excited that I, that, um, that Windsor High is moving in that direction. And I love um, learning from Grace. Um, she's kind of my, my go-to person in trying to bring restorative practices and restorative justice to the third through fifth graders. Um, as you were describing that ethnic studies and then describing how it's, it's all about, you know, relevant literature and a, and a broader, I thought, won't, won't it be a wonderful when we get to the place where um, ethnic studies is social studies and that in every class we're inclusive of voices and, and re real things, you know, that, you know, uh, I recall when I was teaching fourth grade, that's where I really learned about um, colonization, um, not, not in my own upbringing, but while I was teaching it. And, you know, I, we were being really honest, you know, I was teaching at Cali Calmeca and, and I had a very um, uh, uh, mixed race classroom and we talked a lot and, and I remember them just this fire and this passion and this angry anger at uh, Spaniard colonization. And I said, yeah, I'm just as angry, but let's, let's look into why, what would motivate a human to do what they did. And, and they just were so angry. And, and I said, I get you're angry, but let's, let's talk about why humans um, pursue things that might harm other humans, you know, because they were being so righteous about it. And, and I said, okay, let me give you an example. Ms. Zaccone pulls out a whole bucket of brand new juicy markers, okay? And I put them on a center table. And then all the dried up ones from last year that, you know, because I couldn't afford to replace all of them because that's how we roll in education. I, they're, they're on the other tables. I go, which table are you going to run towards? They all said, the juicy markers. I said, of course. And how many of you arrive at the juicy markers and turn around and say, can I give you some? Can I offer some to you? Um, how many of you take what you really want and go back to your table to work? And how many of you step back and negotiate, how are we going to do this fairly? I, and and, and they, they paused and they thought about it. I go, that, that's what's happening when people and humans see something that they really want. Sometimes they forget that taking uh, takes away from others. Um, so they, they had a little bit of compassion for the Spaniards who were colonizing they also understood that like them, I, I am both the colonized and the colonizer, right? Because I'm a mixture coming from the islands. Um, so part of what I want to talk about is how we support everybody in their current position. Because I know right now with all of the, um, the uprising that's happening, that there are a lot of people who are white who are feeling attacked. And, and if we don't um, extend compassion and understanding for what that feels like, we're, we're going to lose allies. And so I'd really like to, for me as the leader of a school site, it's important for me to, um, to find opportunity. And, and right now might be a good one because we have some, you know, time to do this, um, is to insert um, cultural competence and awareness and and how that relates to the social emotional um, health of our kids um, into our professional development and, and give teachers time to 
explore. And I was looking at a resource the other day put out by the Collaborative for um, uh, Academic Social Emotional Learning, CASEL. And, and they, have, uh, they have this four-part plan. And the second part is how do we support teachers right now in, in all of it, plus the equity lens, since that's, what we're, that's, that's what's so obvious right now who is missing out on what's going on. Um, so that's where I am. Thanks for listening. Allison, thank you. I just wanted to build on Grace and Annette's comments as well. Uh, for our students that participated in summer school, we have a lot of flexibility with what we can teach for content. And so um, primarily we focus on at the K-8 level, our English learner students and our migrant students for the summer school program. And we were able to bring in a lot of Hispanic heritage for the content portion of that. And it generated such positive and thought provoking questions from the students that they brought home to their parents. And then they started having those conversations with their parents that not only um, I think were really strong for, for their conversations at home, but then when we had the parent day oh, towards the end of the summer school program, we saw more parents participating and involved than we've ever seen. And so I think not only for that sense of value, but then parents also, if they see their students and themselves being reflected, want to participate and want to engage. And that's been something that you know, I, I think we've had an ongoing struggle in my experience in Windsor with, I, I help with our um, migrant ed PAC meeting, parent meetings, our um, DLAC meetings for our English learner parents. And we go through phases where we see more or less, but I don't feel that we've seen as many parents engaged and seeing that at the summer school, uh, Elizabeth could probably speak to this too, because she participated. Um, but seeing that involvement, I think was a huge reflection of those conversations that students were having with their parents. Nice. Did you want to add anything, Elizabeth? <laughs> um, yeah, I, that you're talking about last year when we, yeah. Yeah, it was very much um, more inviting for them to be <clears throat> learning and listening to things about their own cultural heritage. And what I've learned through this distance learning that we've just gone through is just that importance of reaching out to each of the families individually. Um, and finding out what's important to them. Uh, I had the opportunity of actually driving to their homes and delivering hand packets because they couldn't access anything and we couldn't figure a way of communicating with them. And so I would drive to their homes and I would meet the moms and I'd meet the grandmas and I'd meet the dads and the uncles. And um, then I could begin to see little windows into their life. You know, I would see where they're living. I'd see who they're living with. I'd see all their cousins. Um, I, I learned so much more about my community. And I thought it's really important for us to, first of all, get to know our community. And, and it kind of inspired me for, you know, getting out there and making sure I go and do a home visit to meet these different families and get to know these different people and what they're interested in. And then you can offer things that, um, that are relevant to them, that are important to them. And you can figure out what those things are. Sometimes oh. you don't know it till you actually meet them. That's a beautiful silver lining to COVID. That's, that's really nice. Uh, Sue, you wanted to share something? Mute. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was thinking maybe I should hold back and wait. But um, informing a, a little bit of background about me, I, I did study anthropology and I have a degree in that. I don't use it professionally, but. I'm very excited about this conversation. And I wanna say that <clears throat> things that excite me and I wonder and wanna hear, hear about in Windsor are um, our uh, Latinx history here. There is a lot of history here in this community. And I, I have not gotten out and found out what that is. Um, <clears throat> I'm, there's a lot of families that have been in Latino families that have been in Windsor for many for several generations now like at least three that I know of um, and I'm thinking about that ethnic studies course and how wouldn't it be cool to include local history in that um, so that the kids learn really about you know their family history in, in place in uh, in place of Windsor you know here in Windsor um, 
and also our, you know, POMO history. There's POMO history here. And Windsor, as a, for Curtis's benefit, Windsor is a community that, that has land that's um, being, uh, that, that it now belongs to uh, the uh, local POMO tribe and they are building homes on that land. Those, those children will be attending Windsor schools. And there's a lot going on in our community to uh, create a positive um, relationship as that starts to move forward. Um, and so um, I'm very interested in bringing those into the, ed the public education realm. Great. Before, maybe this is a good point for me yeah. to say, because there's so much goodness here, just to just do some synthesis. Um, and then we can, and then I'll give folks another chance to like, you know, to marinate a little bit. But man, what, I, what I'm hearing is some beautiful, like, you know, synergy. That, that, that's why we, I, I love to start in the way, fashion that you just did, because there's so many, we, par, partly when you get this that way, when, I guess when the county gave folks this opportunity to work with us in this coaching environment, it, it, it kind of gives us an opportunity to, to um, for you all, the experts of your own community to come together, right? And that's like more important than me, me even being here. I'm like the excuse for you all to like really start sharing. But, um, but it's exciting for me to be here because I, I, a lot of this fits into some, some of the back, so a lot of the background that I have. And, and I think you have, this is the, the lens we use is cultural wealth instead of like this cultural deficit perspective, right? And, and then and that may be something that we, 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 we expose you, you all to into a, another meeting or, or maybe uh, it's a community talk that we give Carlos and I uh, and where, where the whole public's invited. There's a lot of different ways, but, but I see a lot of beautiful overlap. And one of the, one of the things I, I, I guess I'm going to start, I'll start where we left off is with Sue's, um, both Sue and, and, and Allison brought up some things and Shannon brought it up earlier too, that, that idea of the in, indigeneity and, and, and then Shannon, I'm sorry, um, uh, Allison brought up relation and Elizabeth brought up relationships. So it, um, hearing about the Pomo uh, building houses reminds me of some of, the, of, of my, my friends and, and the folks, some of the folks I work with up in, in Pine Ridge um, up in South Dakota. Uh, with the Lakota, Dakota, and Lakota people, and the Oglala Sioux, and so th there's a, there's a, I've been, go I've been going there since I was like, became an illegal teacher and banned from my curriculum here in, in Arizona before we found that that was, that was hella racist, that's what the, that's actually what the judge said, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm translating it into Bay Area language, um, uh, so anyway, but, but um, I've been going up there for years. So I drive from Rapid City and if you go a little bit east, you start heading towards through the Badlands and you, set, you, you, you head towards Pine Ridge, which is a super important piece of land in, in our country's history and, um, and a super powerful place to be. And one of the last, like about two, two, two years ago, I, I, I can you know, on those, on those prairie roads, you can kind of go quick and not worry too much about it, except for you know, the occasional cow. You got to keep your eye on for the cow or the deer or whomever may take your car out. But, but for the most part, it's, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot of fun driving. And, and I, I remember seeing houses pop up where the houses were never before. And like, like legit houses, like a neighborhood was, was being developed and said, well, in a, in a sign. I said, welcome to Thunder Valley. And I'm like, what? Like, when did this, what? What's going on? And I remember like going you know, past it pretty quick and then like kind of like, what's going on? And, and the place where I stay when I'm out there is in Kyle, uh, South Dakota. It's really close to, to where it's, it's a part of Thunder Valley, actually. And I asked, I go, what did I, what did I just pass? Like, what's going on there? And so that's really exciting because um, they've been doing that same thing. They, they incorporated themselves. Um, in, the, in an idea that came out of Sweat Lodge. And it came from an elder saying, I'm tired of listening to my friends who are the, my age, right? We're complaining, right? About, we don't have this, we don't have that. And he goes, I'm tired. Are you guys warriors or not? Are you going to step up and do something about this or not? Because otherwise I don't want to hear it about it while we're in ceremony. And they took that as some, some, some as, as a call to action from an elder, right? And, 
and so it's that's really exciting to hear that that's happening because that means something beautiful is that, that we can we can have a relationship with with the pomo and find out what they're doing and how that's going on and and that that that's a healing and a restoration going back to some of the, the stuff that the grace is great where grace is is um her strengths right that restorative that's we all need restoration when it comes to that. We, we have to repair and heal uh, together and, and, and not in isolation, not in silos. Um, for, for folks like myself, when I see things like that, when you see folks like, you know, uh, taking that upon themselves, but still being, you know, not just bootstraps, right? Like we did it, you can do it, but like articulating the difficulty, <laughs> articulating the obstacles, but being able to show the resiliency and the, and the wisdom and the power of, of people to collectively to get through those obstacles, that, those are stories that inspire. And, and they, 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 they start defeating that nihilism or that feeling of, 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 well, I'm just one person, I'm just gonna look after me, right? Which goes back to Annette and the markers, right? <laughs> like that like, lack of, like that lack of mi otro yo, that lack of empathy, that lack of like, seeing the collective and wondering, you know, that's a, that's a lens that, that we all can, we can develop or we can develop another lens where we all do only take care of ourselves. And so what it also reminded me is, is, is when, 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 um, when Allison and Elizabeth were talking about bringing, the family started coming because the, the students were motivated to share. And so this happened in our program in, in Mexican American studies. Like we would have these things called um, encuentros where our, our quarterly where our parents would come and the first encuentro we would just it would be like kind of a back to school night um so the, the we would we would host most of the, the activities um the get to know whatever the community building but eventually the next three three times we met and sometimes we'd meet more than quarterly but we at least did it quarterly the students would show their you know show their um their families, what they're doing in the classes, what matters to them. And the, but they were already doing it at home. So the motivation to come to one of our evenings was, was in stark contrast to our parent conference night where they were picking up their report cards. I'll never forget this. An assistant principal whom I worked with, she was like, congratulations, 11% of our report cards were picked up. We're a school of 3,000. I'm like, 11%, we're bragging about that. Amazing. And, and just a couple of days prior, we had an encuentro where over 90% of our families were represented. There's babies and there's like all little kids. And we, we eventually got so like, like, because we figured this all out together collectively with, with our students, co-construction, like, okay, if the child care is an issue, let's take care of that. Let's, like, let's, have a, let's have our elementary school teachers who have like a gift in that teach our, 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 our students some, you know, uh, you know, a, a lesson so that they can teach it to the young ones and they do an art project over in the corner where they're learning about their cultura at the encuentro while we're doing stuff for the, for, with the high school students who are teaching their families. And then you all had all this, like, you know, this, this cross-pollination, this reciprocity in, 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 in learning. And, and, and that, so that, that momentum that you've already discovered is really there. That's, a, that's, a, like, like, that, that's like, like a vein of ore, to use Northern California, uh you know resources that we once had right that we can tap into that you should that you already have proved is there and 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 it's and it reminds me of like some of the readings i've done and that i use in my teaching now the idea of elder pedagogy because uh, this is what elizabeth brought up the, the importance of visits right we don't do that in contemporary american culture dominant american culture like you know we we but we did in we're kind of doing, we kind of try to do it and via Zoom here. But most of the time, if you hit a meeting, it's like, let's get to it. But like, so whenever I'm doing stuff with my, with my team, you know, if we have a meeting, we visit for a half hour, maybe longer about how they're doing before we get to anything. And if we don't, and, I, and I, we do the same thing on the Education for Liberation Network board that I'm on. So like there'll be 12 of us and we visit for a while before we can, we're constantly developing relationships because relationships move the world. And, you know, and so you, you all have, you all have proven that you can do that too. There's ways to, we can teach this. And that brings me to what Monte brought up earlier was like, which is a brilliant idea, which was connected to what Shannon and Grace were talking about with ethnic studies and, and, and with, which was like, I can't believe the power that we could have with that idea of, I, I've, and I'm so mad at myself, Monty, thank you so much, because 
like librarians are dope. They're like the most amazing, insurgent, radical love folks I know, right? And like to leave them out of any of the planning that I've been having with my partners, I'm filled with shame right now. Um, but but like there, there's a real opportunity for where the community could learn with our students. If if like Grace was talking, like here's our gaps. Here's where here's the look. Let's look at curriculum. And I'm a literature teacher, so she was speaking to me, man. I was like, yeah, that's what I did. So um, I, I got tons of things we could read. <laughs> but, um, but 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 systemically, right? We have to change it systemically, and and we have to change it in a way where it's not. One thing I learned about our struggle is like. The district siloed us and how how horrible that was and we were you know what we fed into that too because we're like you know you doubted us and we're kicking butt we're doing things that you don't know how to do then leave us alone because they doubted us so it felt like we had a chip on our shoulder but really what would have helped right away is all of us to recognize the power of our program and to blast it out and then and then to the community and to first the community of educators and the families and then to the community where there, you know, there might be, there always, you know, is um, obstacles, you know, that are built upon lenses of inhumanity, dehumanization, all the stuff that Annette was articulating. But to think that the, we, the, the library could be a program, you know, that where they're learning similar things as what we're doing K-12, I've, we haven't stumbled upon that. And that's, it's like, as Gia said, it's really stupid of us not to have thought of that. So thank you again, Multi. But that there's there's opportunities here um, for, for us to learn as a community, which um, which is super powerful. So I just wanted to to name a few of those things. Oh, and the last thing is like when we don't know our history and there's not a textbook, that then the onus is on us to go find that history and bring it back. We call it in in some of the scholarship that I I I I grab onto in critical race theory, it's called counter narratives or counter storytelling. So the legal profession actually created this first. Like it, they, since, a, since a lot of stories, there's stories of BIPOC people, black indigenous people of color, um, like they, our stories were in, there's no precedent. The precedents are all like really horrible, right? Legally. So we had to develop our own stories to create a legal uh, shift a legal standing and so um, and like what I used to tell my students all the time stories are more powerful than law and I'll teach you that another day or another meeting because I don't want to suck up too much air but what you all there's there's a lot of there's a lot of connective points here and I see the chat blowing up so I'm going to shut up and get caught up and and then start keep taking some I just, I wanted to make a comment on this, you know, the, the stories and the richness and the power that there is in story. Um, Windsor Wellness Partnership put together, um, and Rosa did an amazing job. She put together a uh, open mic night on our town green. And um, I don't know how many of you were, you know, we, we did it, it was done pretty uh, quick turnaround, but I learned so much from a Windsor High School student who is now an SSU student who got up to the mic and just, she said, I, I had no intention of coming up here today, but I was really moved by her story because it resonated so much with me personally. And you know what she said and how she had to whitewash herself to feel more accepted in her high school community. And the process that she went through um, making sure she didn't have an accent, making sure that um, she, um, you know, was with kind of like the right group of people and, and was feeling, you know, like she's going on this path and was, was told by, you know, someone, um, aren't you glad you're not like the other Mexicans? And how deeply that, you know, hurt her and, it, and she thought in a sense that she was just kind of going crazy, that these feelings that she was having were just her, it was her. She completely internalized it as, as her. And not until she got to SSU and took a class on equity and race relationship, root relations and diversity, did she recognize, oh my gosh, I am not crazy. And myself, same thing. I went to college and I'm from El Salvador and I wanted to learn more about my, my Central American history and was mortified at, at what I learned. But I had to spend my own money 
that was outside of my major to even be able to access that. And I was really fortunate that I, that I could, but, but really kind of going back to this idea of story, this young woman, I mean, I, I carry her everywhere I go because it really resonated with me and made me remember things that I had forgotten about myself. So I just wanted to share that. That's, that's beautiful. I, yeah, it was a very powerful event and I'm so glad we did it. It was, it was a short turnaround, um, you know, not a great, um, you know, I think we had maybe 20, th maybe 30 people at the most that you know, were coming and going, but it was still very powerful and I'm glad we had it. Um, one thing I do want to, I, I, I have, uh, I'm part of a Latinx task force with uh, Supervisor Gore um, that we meet every week. And one of the things they're pushing is um, let's stop calling people out and, and instead calling them in. So let's, and, and then, you know, this kind of goes back to, uh, I don't want anyone with, with um, white skin to feel like we're picking on them or we're going to, you know, we're blaming you or, or so I really, if we're going to grow, if we're going to have this hopefully powerful shift of rewiring, you know, how do we um, invite more people in and, um, you know, have a, a good positive conversation with them. So I also want to work on that down the road, um, be able to respond to eye rolls or, you know, I, I, I sometimes uh, share things on Facebook in Spanish and I'll get emojis back from just random people like with an eye roll. And I know that it's, or at least I'm telling myself it's because it's in Spanish and they're like, and I've had people tell me to my face, why do we have to print this in Spanish also? So I have to, you know, just learn how to educate or, or, or have, I need help learning how to explain to people that, you know, my parents are, you know, we're born in Mexico, they speak English, but they read span. they can understand Spanish better in Spanish, or they can understand what's happening if they read it in Spanish. So I would like to be able to have something in Spanish for them. A anyway, so um, I don't know what else, oh, we have, uh, what, seven more minutes? Curtis? If, what, I think what, Chris had his hand up. Oh, Chris? Uh, yeah, there's one, there's one more thing I want to say after Chris, for sure. Okay, and I, I just, a brief comment, I'm, you know, I, I, Curtis, when you're talking about Arizona, you know, I've spent 20 years there and I'm, you know, I'm really familiar with communities that in some ways were sort of similar to what uh, proportionality wise as, um, as what Sonoma is. But what I, what I'm finding, and I'm not trying to be critical, but it's, I, I don't, I just really see that the white normative culture and the, uh, the sort of the where the power resides and where the where things happen seem to be um, uh, it doesn't seem as shared as some places as I've been and so I think that we've got some ways to go to make people feel comfortable and make um, the way we meet and the way we come together as a community more open to um, the diversity of our population because it's really kind of remarkable I think that it seems really um, um, pretty much monocultural in some ways, not just by the people who are attending, but by the way things kind of proceed and happen and the topics that we talk about. I don't think it's intentional. I think it's just something that's kind of baked into our history here. And just for um, the, the knowledge, uh, in Windsor we have almost 30% Latinos, um, but I think in the district or in, there in the high school, uh, I think it, the percentage is higher of how many Latinos, Dr. Collins, do you know? I am not exactly sure the percentage break what breakdown, uh, but but yes, I, I would definitely imagine it's more than 30 percent, definitely. I, I think it's more like 50. Yeah. And, and my comments aren't meant to be critical. I just, it's, it's kind of was a little bit of an awareness thing for me to move from, you know, from Arizona to San Francisco and out of Sonoma County, just to see how differently um, the cultures kind of interact and kind of hold their presence in the community. Mm -hmm. 
It's actually 52 percent mm -hmm. at Windsor High. Um, I just I wanted to add I think you know part of it to you know Elizabeth's point about going and visiting families so often in community work and I've and I've been in community work for quite some time it's always folks inviting people to the table versus us going to them and you know part of it is just the structure that we're in we we have to make meetings and that's just kind of how how we how we do things but um, and I know Rose and I have talked a lot about this is like, how, how can I set up a chair in a community and just sit there and gather stories? Can I bring coffee? Can we do, there's this amazing, like a hundred cups of coffee. Can you have a hundred cups of coffee in your community and not ask someone to come to you, but you come to them. And so I think part of that is, is changing the narrative of how we do business. And the home visits is such a beautiful example of going to somebody where they feel safe because right now, especially safety is huge, not just from a health perspective, but from a um, uh, status, immigration status perspective. And um, it's, it's less scary when someone's coming to you because they're there to help you and they genuinely are curious and want to know more about you versus the other way around. So I just, um, something to kind of noodle on. That's awesome. Uh, I just wanted to also, you know, it's important. Thank you, Chris, for giving voice um, and for Rosa bringing up the idea of, you know, our, our, our European American brothers and sisters, you know, the folks, as ba James Baldwin said, the, the, the folks who think they are white. Um, uh, that's deep, that's deep. <laughs> uh, we're all products of colonialism. And so, and, colon and, and this is a really, you know, highbrow, uh, a Costa analysis, colonialism jacks us all up. And so when we understand that racism is bad for all of us, we understand that we're all, we've all been produced, many, not all, most of us, like, uh, like the vast, vast majority of us um, that get together in community for to, in a place that is learning, you know, like, like the, the, the places where we facilitate, almost all of us in the room ha has, have been through some system uh, that is that is root, deeply rooted in the colonialism and white supremacy, and and that's history, and that's fine. But when we don't do, when to, we don't interrogate these systems, we don't find out where they are dehumanizing. Then we're all probably going to ourselves be products of the dehumanizing system, and then unfortunately, you know, we walk right into the, that same that we become part of that same dehumanization. We can be very easily if we're not doing that personal self-reflection and community, community dialogue and, and, and uh, to, to, to do what Annette was um, uh, challenging her fourth graders, fourth graders in there, uh, the juicy markers, juicy is such a great word. Uh, that that we, all need to we all need to have those conversations about the juicy markers constantly, you know, at every level, at every age group, at every, in every, in every spot and to be a more healthy community, to be a more healthy citizenry, to be a more healthy neighbor, uh, and, and uh, to, to get away from citizen language because that's loaded now too. But long story short, um, one of the ways that we've been able to connect with our European American folks so that they don't feel like this is a pile on and we're pretty good at it. That's I think the one thing that I can, one of the many things like we're uncomfortable, we're, we're sorry, we're comfortable in the uncomfortable and we try to get we try to help folks get comfortable in the uncomfortable because that's guaranteed when you're a teacher, when you're working with community, when you're working in the United States of America, there's going to be discomfort. So how are we comfortable in the discomfort so we can help steward us towards, towards our common humanity? And the, the idea is like European American folks need to understand that they're, they're indigenous people too, right? They're just not indigenous from here. So what is the process look like for your people of European descent to capture their own, to recapture, to restore their own indigeneity? They've, they've, they've replaced the, this is a person who's biracial, whose mama is very much uh, part of that tradition. So, um, but we've replaced that indigeneity with nativism for this stolen land. And that's problematic. It's problematic for the person of European American descent who has conflated being born here and being the new you know, stewards of this land and needing to learn about the old stewards and the, and the ancestors and be humble to that, have that cultural humility 
as well as understanding that they've replaced their own indigeneity and how harmful that can be. And now when we get to that point where folks uh, that think they are white, as Baldwin said, are getting into some groups and talking this stuff out about recapturing their indigeneity and trying to be better partners and stewards of the land and learn with cultural humility about where they're at in space and place, I probably won't have to work much anymore and that'll be excellent. But um, that, that's until those days are happening, that's, that's the road we're on. And so that's a humanizing way of, of, of calling folks in to the conversation so that they can stop. And the other thing is a lot of times good hearted folks just get paralyzed with the history. Like I'm horrible because I come, like, listen, if we broke down all out of our histories, we will find some awfulness we did to somebody. Right. So the idea is like, what are you going to do to make the world less awful? The seven generations to follow, you know, that, that, that's, some, you know, honor the seven generations before that came before you and then work for the seven generations to follow. And Annette had her hand up. So. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of, um, when I think about, um, I'm just so inspired by Windsor High School right now. I just want to say y'all are doing amazing work. And I think, you know, I think about Michelle Obama saying, you know, when you get through the door, you hold the door open for somebody else. And I see that happening all over, um, you know, Windsor by educators like the ones who are here. And um, I think I, I, what's sticking for me is relationship and story and awareness. Um, and if we can keep cultivating that and extend that hand or open that door for everybody, right? The people who, you know, uh, put themselves in the category of being white and inviting them through um, and having compassion and, and love rather than anger towards them, right? Because there's really no them. <laughs> we're all, we're all, um, none of us can say we're one fixed, you know, we all are blended. <laughs> We just visibly look different. It's the packaging that looks mm -hmm. a little bit different. And that's another way I schooled fourth graders. It's packaging, honey. It's, that's all it is. The rest of it is the same. Um, and so I, I think that the same compassion that that multicultural education professor who kind of extended her hand and said, you know, she saw me. <laughs> she saw that I needed a lot of learning. And she, was, she approached me with compassion, the invitation, not criticism that somehow I missed the boat on who I was, you know, culturally. And um, so I appreciate those, the work that those type of people do. When, and, and if we can just create more of those folks that say, here, let me walk with you. Let me tell you what I know. Let me, let me walk by you when it gets hard because, you know, while she cracked the door open for me, it, it's been a really hard journey. Um, and, and it is, and we just need to acknowledge that for everybody, not just kids of color, but everybody engaged in, you know, facing the history and, and, you know, taking it down, you know. Thank you so much, Annette. Um, I just want to let you know, I am going to save the chat, so I'll email everyone a link to the chat conversation to a file, but I do want, before people start leaving, I do want to let you guys, um, I want to leave you with some homework. Um, so um, in my meetings with uh, Supervisor Gore, there is a discussion coming up about changing Christopher Columbus Day in Sonoma County to Indigenous Day. So let's start thinking about how that conversation is gonna look like, especially to those who say why, and it's always been like this, or you know, who are not gonna maybe agree with that. So maybe just start doing a little of your own research and how we're going to bring people into the conversation and the idea that it's going to probably change um, instead of pushing them away. <laughs> uh, if you want to wrap it up for us, Senora Costa, I'm so happy you, you've, we had this. Yeah, I, I, I'm just really excited. I think there's a tremendous, you, you all are, you're a tremendous group of folks and, it's, and, and you have so much community cultural wealth in your community that we could, you know, tap into to, as we build together. So, you know, if, if we need another one of these to come together, that's where we get more like action oriented, feel that yeah, we're, we're all in and, um, and, and look at us as partners from this point forward. If you, if you see roles for us specifically too, to, for, for public, you know, for public gatherings and whatnot, even if they have to be the way they are right now, you know, via 
um, uh, via technology, but, but we're, we'll be, we're here for you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, and I will keep everyone posted on upcoming events. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, I'm going to save the last of the chat before I lose it. Yeah, Show in a folder. I'm, I'm learning. Doing some screenshots. I think uh, I'm learning how to do this. Yeah. To save the chat. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just, I got it. I figured it out. Yeah. But I'm just. Got it. Yeah, I got it. But I had to move around and create a new folder. So what do you think? That was dynamic. Oh, it was. Awesome. Yeah. I'm at and thank you, you know what I uh, I had a um, work day at Cal yesterday. It was very very physical. <laughs> oh no no problem. I just I, like, I, I you, you no know, I literally I was I woke up at my normal time at <laughs> thirty and then I crashed back to sleep and I woke up uh, to my I have a little neighborhood my little neighborhood group here yeah. on the on the text and. I was, everyone was talking and that's what woke me up. I didn't even, and then I saw your text. I went, what time is it? Literally. <laughs> no, I, I, I even put a little makeup on. I was like, I want to be you know, ready. I threw my hair in the front and put my shirt on and uh, grabbed a coffee. I was uh, like. Oh yeah, God. no, no. I was, I was, I was, like I said, I was ready to, 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 to run with it. I, cause it's very, yeah. So I'm, I, yeah. yeah, I'm so yeah. impressed. Um, I'm so impressed by the, the people from, the, I don't, I didn't know a lot of those people. I've heard their names, but oh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, oh, some, yeah, great. it's nice. Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I knew, I knew, um, well, I didn't know Allison and I, I had heard Allison's name, but um, well, let me hit I pause. 